So how do we go about getting the love from ourselves that we need? There's a few different ways. I did the normal, like, how, you know, yes, I'm walking again, and it's noisy. Sorry about that. I can only think when I'm walking, I guess. Anyway, I did the normal, like, uh, you know, how everyone else goes about it. You know, treat yourself and go take care of yourself and say I love you in the mirror and all of that good stuff. I tried all of those. And that was kind of when I was in the faking it portion. And it was working a little bit, but I knew it wasn't going to last because it was just really, I, I didn't love myself. And so doing those things, it was like, well, putting a band-aid on a bullet wound, you know, it was slowing the bleeding, but there was still a bullet stuck inside me and that band-aid was not going to do much. So I had to really what I had to do and the the fix the permanent fix to not loving yourself is to figure out why what is it that you don't like about yourself and uh, you really have to sit and think about it you really have to dig deeper than you know saying I love you to the mirror and you know, giving yourself a bubble bath. Those things are nice. And once you do love yourself, they're nice. But in all honesty, none of those things did the trick for me. They, I knew it wasn't going to, I wasn't going to have the results that I needed, the results that I wanted. So I really had to go in and see what it was that was causing the problem. And I had to fix that problem. And that is why I'm pretty sure, and to be on completely honest, I am sure that this is why most people just keep on going without loving themselves. Because it's rough. You, you find out some things, you drudge up some stuff, and it's not pretty. It's it's really, yeah, it, it was rough. It was very rough. But here I am. I do love myself. I And it only, I've read that, you know, some of the books that I was reading about self-love, you know, they were like, well, uh, maybe after a year. I was like, a year. <laughs> That's not, and that's not good enough for me. I needed, I wanted to change now. And it has to do with a lot of my other issues. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist and things like that. But no, a, a year was not the timeline that I was working with. So I really went on like an extreme uh, discovery, self-discovery kind of journey and I discovered a lot of things that were wrong with me. I had childhood emotional neglect, I have complex PTSD, um, no self-esteem, no confidence, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Um, I thought I was suffering from depression but it, it's actually a symptom of uh, childhood emotional neglect that was misdiagnosed but that's neither here nor there I'm, I'm in the process of working on all of those things and I'll probably it's something that I'll probably work on for the rest of my life but I'm happy to do it if it means that I will not be the person that I used to be I'm just fine with that really it is not an issue for me to work on it. I love doing it. And if I can share with you to help you go through it and get better, 
then it makes it all worth it. But I think the number one thing that I didn't do the last time, the time that I failed, thought I was getting somewhere but really wasn't, is I wasn't doing it for me. I was actually doing it for the love of somebody else. And the love that I'm still, that I still have, and that was why I decided to change for me this time. You have to do it for you. You can't do it for anybody else because you will fail. Because eventually it turns into resentment and then resentment turns into why am I doing this? Why am I bothering? You don't see the results that you want. You know, <coughs> they may or may not ever notice that you're changing when you're doing it for them. Because why? Why are you doing it for them? Don't. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to them. Do it for you. You owe it to yourself to do it the right way and do it for you. So once you get to that point where you're ready and you really can't change until you are ready to accept it because it is a process. Once you are ready to change for you, then you've got to kind of look at it like an onion. It's round on the outside, but you know once you start cutting into that bad boy, there is layer after layer after layer of eye-watering goodness. <laughs> so you have to get to the middle. You have to go through all the levels and you'll think, oh, I figured this one out. And then <laughs> that one's going to lead to another series of layers that you have to go through. And then you'll keep just keep finding them until you get to the middle. Um, my middle ended up being the childhood emotion, emotional neglect. And then surrounding it were the levels of different things that I used as a defense mechanism from being a child with emotional neglect. Um, you know, not feeling loved, uh, being ridiculed. Ugh, it was a mess. It was a mess. And I, I stopped being a victim. That's another thing you have to kind of get through. Don't be a victim anymore. Own your life. Own who you are. Love who you are. Just... If you've messed up, own it. If you've done the wrong thing, own it. It's not going to kill you. It's the first step. You've got to stop being a victim. Because when you're in victim mode, you can't love yourself. You won't. Because you, you think everybody else owes you. You think that everybody owes you something. And you'll never be happy. You will never accept anyone's love. You will never take what anyone is willing to give you in victim mode. That It's the worst place to be. So I'm going to call that step number one. It's very important. Get out of victim mode. You'll never find what your actual problem is because you're still going to be blaming everybody else. And I'm going to make a video about responsibility and blame because that was another hard one for me was taking responsibility for my own bullshit. And I had to. Because while, yes, other people may be responsible for the shit that you're going through, they're not entirely to blame. You're there too, you know. Own it. Just let it be. You don't have to say that it's necessarily all your fault, but in some way, you either let it happen, didn't stop it, didn't change it, didn't figure out what was going on. So, you know, you're always, there's always something, but just accept it. It, it, it is what it is. You know, it's not going to kill you and you'll feel lighter once you accept it and just grab the bull by the horns and say, you know what? This is what it is. I, I have some responsibility for this, at least. At least a little bit. Admit to a little bit at least. That's the first step, you know? 
accept it a little bit. And then you can accept it more. And once you keep, keep that acceptance going, you'll eventually start to own it completely. And then you realize that you have the power. You have now taken the power away from everybody else to make you feel a certain way. And you've taken that power to, for you. So now you know nobody can ever make you feel something ever again that you don't want to feel. And that is amazing. Once you get to that point, you're not a victim anymore. And you never will be. As long as you keep realizing that that is what you need to do. Alright, the second step, and I did not go in this order myself, but I wish I had. So I'm kind of, you're learning, you're getting to the benefit of my mistakes. Get your self-esteem in order. Self-esteem and self-confidence are completely different things. One of them you can earn from other people, and that's confidence. One of them you can only get from inside you, and that is self-esteem. Don't let anybody tell you different. It's not true. Um, I read some amazing books by Nathaniel Brandon. I will link them below. Get them. Do them. Do the... the uh, activities that he suggests. I will probably post them on my blog or make up my own. Um, they're not, it's nothing like major, but it helps so much. You need, you need your self-esteem. And if you've never had it, once you start getting it, it is amazing. Just do the work that he gives you. It helps you become conscious of your situation conscious of yourself it's just the work is amazing and it makes you feel so much better so that's number two don't be a victim number one get some self-esteem number two because self-confidence will come along with that you can work on that yourself self-confidence is not as hard as self-esteem self-esteem is insanely important so get that confidence you can get by doing affirmations and i'll I'll give you an affirmation video for self-confidence. It worked for me. I'm feeling so much better about it. Let's see. The next step that I would suggest is whatever else you have going on. If you're suffering from CEN, which is childhood emotional neglect, I read some awesome books on that. And honestly, in this day and age, I don't know anyone who isn't suffering from that. It's just, unfortunately, an epidemic. And I will link some really good books about how to heal that. You can do it without a therapist. You can do it with a therapist. It's all up to you. Depends on, again, how far you're willing to take it, how far you're willing to go. Um, beyond that, it's going to differ for everybody. Um, like I am, in, I am married, I am in a relationship and fixing my relationship was a big help for me and it helped me love myself and accept the love from my husband. And I'm going to talk about, um, well, I had to build a secure, um, attachment type. I was a very clingy, desperate, needy person, which is very toxic. Um, all of the styles of attachment can be toxic, except for the secure one. And I am well on my way right now to being secure. I'm pretty much like, I would say, 89% mm, there. I'm not going to give up going. I'm still got work to do. I will probably always be at an 89% just because I will not let myself, you know, sit on my laurels and just relax into it and go back to being the way I was. But here is what you really want to do. Find out what your attachment style is and I will I'm gonna make all these videos to try to help you guys um, You know, I'm just one person and I'm trying really hard to get all of these videos out as quickly as possible I'll probably have to start doing them more than once a week um, And I'm really gonna work hard on that because this is very important to me But your attachment style discover what it is. It's not hard. There's only four of them and work on becoming secure. 
I'm almost going to guarantee you that you are not secure attachment right now if you are listening to this video and trying to figure out how to love yourself because that's part of the secure attachment style is you already have to do that. So we're going to guess you're one of the other. I am the uh, anxious attachment style. My husband is an avoidant attachment style. <sighs> those two attract each other and honestly I read a lot about them and I have a really good book on how to deal with a person that is like that which I will go through in another video doesn't have anything to do with this one but you have to accept them for who they are if you're going to make it work and you have to accept yourself for who you are if you're going to make it work I'm kind of going off on little tangents here and that's why I usually work with a script but this kind of felt good so I'm doing it that way anyway have your relationship in order because if you have resentment towards your partner or anger or you're just feeling bad in your relationship you are not going to be able to love yourself but here's the the silver lining in that cloud once you start loving yourself your relationship is going to improve almost on its own because you're now willing to accept that love, you're willing to accept those knitted socks that I talked about in the other video. Anything that they're willing to give you, you accept it because you already love yourself. You've already got that love. You can see the gems that they're giving you, no matter how tiny. Everything is just amazing. Everything is a gift. And you love it because you know you don't really need it and you stop becoming if you're codependent you stop doing that you stop becoming codependent when you love yourself because you don't have that anxious issue all of these once it was like a ball of yarn that's all tangled up and knotted once I started pulling on different threads it got looser and looser and then everything just kind of started falling into place that's why I'm saying number one give up your victim status don't do it anymore don't be a victim anymore be who you are just own it acceptance and I already made a video about acceptance because that is one of the major parts of not being a victim anymore watch that video practice it be accepting of who you are get out of victim mode that is the most important thing and then number two get your self-esteem in order I'm going to start making more videos about self-esteem because that one was a big one for me and it was rather well it wasn't that it was hard it was that I was avoiding it and I think it's because I knew that um, it was going to help me see our brain does this really funny thing and it wants us to be the same it wants to create, you know, to keep stasis, homeostasis, the status quo. It, it doesn't like you to change. And so you're going to keep going back. And this is one of the really hard parts. Just keep doing it. Your brain is going to kind of keep doing this dance with you where it tries to get you to go back and be who you were. Fight it. Fight it with all you have. Recognize it. You'll get grumpy. You'll get whiny and you'll feel like you're sliding back and you feel like oh why am I doing this why am I bothering nobody cares that is your brain trying to trick you into being who you were before don't give into it keep watching these videos email me message me whatever you have to do tell me hey delight help me I am falling back I need help I will help you I uh, trust me I know how hard it was I kept wanting to go back. That was what happened to me the first time I tried it. I gave up. I, th I thought, oh, well, I'm good enough. And I went back. You are enough. But when you have self-esteem, you get, just keep going because you realize that you'll never be. You know, enough is never enough. You always want to better yourself, to improve yourself. Not for anybody but you. It's not a matter, I don't want you to take this wrong, it's not a matter of like, you know, oh, I'm not good enough, so I have to improve. No, by accepting yourself as you are right now, you will see the things that can be improved and you'll enjoy 
improving them. But your brain still steps in there and tries to throw a wrench in the you know works. It it's it's a delicate dance, and I'm here to help you. I will help you keep on going and get to your goal and be the best person you can be. Hopefully this helps you. Um, I'm going to go into those two major steps more elaborately. I know I kind of flew off the, the tangent there, but this is so important to me. Don't be a victim. Get your self-esteem in order. I will make videos on both of those, how to go about doing so, what the first steps are. I hope this helped you kind of get in there and figure out how to start loving yourself. Let me know. I, I'm very interested in how you're doing. Check out my blog, comment on stuff. I'm going to throw more things on there. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on this. This is new for me. I'm really going for the gold this time. I am not letting my brain tell me that I can't do this. All right. I will uh, be around with another video soon. Two, two this week. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, have a great journey and I will see you later. Bye-bye.